Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, you can't really apply a double integration application unless you understand the foundation of the region of integration and the order of integration and what the function inside the double integral might mean. So I've got a little example, not a difficult function to study, but it really kind of encapsulates some things we've been covering recently. So this is the equation of a plane that's been simplified. Uh, the normal vector to the plane, 3, 4, 2, is available to us. But we don't know about any other specific given point in the plane, but we have practiced this before. Um, if x is 4 and y and z are both 0, we find out that the x-intercept is at 4, 0, 0. If y is 3 and x and z are both 0, we do the same and we find the y-intercept, which is 0, 3, 0. And finally, if z is, that's right, if z is 6, we get the z-intercept, 0, 0, 6. And this triangle we used to represent a portion of the plane that this equation is. Now, in the first octant where all x, y, and z values are positive, this solid shape, um, we actually can study more than one um, geometric interpretation of this right now. We could actually discover its volume if we could have a region of integration, the function that represents the third dimension with respect to the area. And it turns out we have all of the necessary pieces to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make room for a couple of other items. First, the top view of this three-dimensional shape that shows us the x and y axis, where it intercepts the y axis at three and the x axis at four. This triangle here is this triangle here. Um, that becomes our region of integration. This line that continues forever, has a nice equation. Uh, slope is down 3 and right 4, negative 3 fourths x, and a y-intercept of 3. All of the necessary pieces for setting up the region of integration in terms of a volume problem dy, dx, we have everything we need. x goes from 0 to 4. y varies between the x-axis and that line with that equation. The y values go from y equals 0 is the x-axis, and y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3 is the upper boundary. Now, about that z, about that function, we can solve this equation for z equals and have it become a function of y and x. Um, if you subtract terms and then divide by 2, z, which is the same as the function we're looking for, is 12 minus 3x minus 4y. 
all divided by 2. And we can write that reduced. 12 over 2 is 6. Negative 3 halves x minus 4 over 2 is negative 2y. This would calculate volume of this solid object in the first octant. Now, I don't seem to be doing a good job of looking at my title here. I am now interested in the area of that surface. It is a triangle, but I don't know its base or its height. It's tilted up against the z-axis, so that's not necessarily an easy geometry find. So let's summarize what I've got collected here. I've got z equals this function of the plane. I have a region of integration with this upper boundary is the line y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. I have a formula for surface area, 1 plus the partial derivative squared plus the partial derivative squared. And if I want, I should be easily able to collect these two partial derivatives. The x partial derivative here is negative 3 over 2, and the y partial derivative is... That's right, just negative 2. So, here we go. Surface area equals double integration square root 1 plus x derivative squared y derivative squared dy dx and from our previous example, we already set up the region of integration. x went from 0 to 4. See the picture here? And y went from 0 to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. Now, we're going to integrate this. It turns out to be not too bad. 0 to 4. 0 to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. That's 9 fourths. That's 4. That's 1. If you take a little bit of time and build some common denominators, which you should do, hit pause first. Root 29 over 4 dy dx. So that constant may factor out. Square root of 4 is 2, 0 to 4, 0 to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. Let's see how we do. Equals root 29 over 2, 0 to 4. Integral with respect to y is just y. Y goes from 0 to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. We'll integrate x later. If y is 0, we're happy. If y is that, I don't know if I'm happy. We'll find out. What do we get here? Negative 3 fourths x plus 3. Eh, this shouldn't be too bad. Antiderivative, root 29 over 2, negative 3 eighths x squared plus 3x, where x goes from 0 to 4. If x is 0, these terms are gone. If x is 4, 16 over 8 is 2, that's going to be negative 6. 3 times 4 is 12. If you add these together, you get 6. 6 over 2 is 3 times the square root of 29. And it's an area. So if we were given units, we would think of it with square units. 
Once again, I scrolled the paper too far, so let's fix that. There is your surface area, folks. Many of the book problems don't integrate very nicely. Think about it. You're about to take two partial derivatives, square them, add them together. Let's add one for fun. Square root that, and somehow this integrates nicely. Sometimes polar coordinates play a role in helping. Sometimes you'll need to use more advanced techniques. Uh, in my class, I've given some guidance on how to uh, face those types of problems. Other teachers will have maybe different ways of facing those problems. Have fun, everyone.